Okay, well, I've got, I've got a thousand things running through my little brain, so I need to pray. Father God, I thank you for all you're doing. And Lord, I, I need you to keep me concise and keep me together. Lord, vistas have opened up to my, my understanding. And I don't want to give something that's not time to give it yet. So, Lord, help me put things in perspective. I just give you praise. Thank you for all you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. I went to the Awakening the Destiny Conference. God, that was fun. It was just really a blast and um, hard. Very difficult. Difficult for my brain to wrap around all the things that were coming at it. And uh, don't worry, it's all good. Um, the Lord provided me two more books on quantum physics, so you guys are safe. We are teaching on healing. What a concept and what a time. Um, I didn't realize that going to this, that it wasn't just a... Um, it was from Global Awakening, so I kind of thought it was more of a, a missions thing, whatever, and I didn't know exactly what to look for. But what it was was as a healing seminar. Um, I had a very interesting time with the Lord. He and I, we discussed a lot of different things. And um, here's the deal. We learned, and we've been teaching you, that 87 to 94%, depending on the study that you've looked at, of the diseases are based in the emotions, are based in the soul. So it made sense to me that if a person had a disease problem, first thing you did was look for the root, look for the emotional thing, because that you're, you're touching 87 to 94% of the diseases. That made sense to me until this week. I realized I was, I was backwards. It's okay, that can happen. Here's the deal. Let's take somebody first to the power of God and see what he does. If they don't get healed, then we go for the root. And I discovered that what we have is we have a major revelation, something that even all these healing people could use. Because when they get done and somebody's not healed, they look at them and go, okay. You may get healed as things go along, you may not, whatever. And they don't know, they really, every single one of them did not know what to do with the people who hadn't gotten healed. Okay? And I went, ooh, pick me. And they just thought the Holy Spirit was on me, so they didn't even think about it. So they just, just watch him fall over, he'll speak in tongues, it's all good. It's just the Holy Spirit on him, it's all good. Just don't even worry about him. And I, no, 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 pick me, pick me. Okay, I got it. I got it. I really, I got an understanding. Okay, so here's the thing. We're going to be, we're going to be really launching out into some really neat things and have some fun. But here's, here's my thing, is that we are giving, the Lord has given us the capacity to make sure everybody's healed. Everybody. What I've been asking for for a long time is to have one of those them all ministries. A them all ministry. What's a them all ministry? And that's when it says, the Bible says, and Jesus healed them all. I want a them all ministry. I want to see everybody healed. Okay? I think that's just a good idea. But here's the other thing that has come out through all this is that people keep preaching and yelling about, we got to get the Christians outside of their four walls. And I, am, I have heard the four walls statement for so many years, and I am sick of it. Why? Because that automatically assumes that what happens within the four walls is wrong. And that's not true. What happens in the four walls is good stuff, but we've got to get so much explosive stuff happening in the four walls that the four walls can't contain it. Then we're going to be reaching outside the four walls because the people are already satiated. They're already blown away. So what happens inside the four walls is a good thing. Folks, the church is not wrong. The church is not bad. The church is loved by our Savior who wants us together for real good purposes. 
Okay, and what happened at the conference was not outside the church. That was the church meeting. Just met in a different place, and there's a whole bunch of people from different places that hadn't met together before. And they got together with one purpose, and the Lord directed it, and people were changed. What is that? Well, I had church for, for several days. I had a good time. I had some experiences happen to me that just like really interesting. But we're going to go on here. We're going to be talking about the vision today. Why the vision? What are you talking about? Nope, it's not what you think. It's okay. <laughs> Why is there disease? Well, because there's sin on the planet. There's no way to separate sick, sickness from sin. Why? Because every time you're sick is because you're in sin? No. Every time you're sick is because there's sin on the planet. The fall of man caused us to have a, an issue with sickness. It's going to be around. Because if, if there had never been sin, there would never be sickness. Okay, so where would sin come from? Sin came from man choosing sin and submitted to the authority of it. When sin came, it brought along with it sickness and disease. Now that's kind of interesting. God put these systems in before he had us in there. Do you understand? These systems are running. He says, I put before you life, death, good, and evil, blessing, and cursing. Choose life that you may live. The systems are in there. The system is functioning. But death, evil, cursing is automatic. When you're just walking around in, the, in life, what happens? Death, evil, and cursing. It's an automatic. We don't have to try to bring badness. Left to itself, it's all going to go that direction. <laughs> okay. No, you don't have to teach your kids how to, how to be sinful. They just don't have to. It's just an automatic. You do have to teach them the other direction. The other direction must be chosen. Life, good, and blessing must be chosen. It must be applied, or else we're going to go to the default setting, death, evil, and cursing. We are commanded, though, we found out last week, well, actually we found this for a long time ago, but we, as we were teaching last week, that we are commanded not to judge. Now, therefore, when you judge, which are you choosing, life or death? Good or evil, blessing or cursing. When you walk into judgment, you are choosing the bad side of all this. Well, you open yourself up to that system, what's going to happen? Sickness. You open yourself up to that system, that's what's going to happen. It will go to the default setting. If you're not pursuing to walk out of that, you're going to get the normal. It's just the way it comes. When people hurt us, we judge them. That's the way it works. You bad people hurted by, you hurt my awesomeness. How dare you come against my godhood? You hurt me. Ah, you are worthy of death and destruction. <laughs> They're deserving of sentence from our courtroom. We condemn people who do that. We condemn people who hurt us, condemn people who say things against us. We condemn them. And then we do the same thing. And when we do the same thing they do, then we come under the same sentence that we judge them with. We judge ourselves worthy of that sentence, and our body fulfills the execution. Our body fulfills the execution of that judgment. Judgment will get us sick. That's all there is to it. Now, we just learned that last week. I'm not going to teach that all over again. Immune systems quit protecting us when we judge them to do so. Okay? When we judge ourselves, our immune system just quits working. Why should it protect us when we deserve it? Okay? That's where sickness comes in. Self-judgments are critical, and they're deadly. We need to forgive. Need to. You got to. That person hurt you. or well, forgive them. But they haven't repented. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the fact that you need to forgive them. Just forgive them. Don't hold that sentence against them. Both ours, we need both others and ourselves. We need to forgive ourselves just as much. Okay? Let's go a deeper issue. That was judgments. Now, we have now hit what? We've talked about how to hear the voice of God. We've talked about how to find the root and the lies that are believing. And we've talked about judgments. Now, that's pretty heavy. That's some heavy-duty stuff. But we're going to go deeper. Why? Well, if a disease a person has or their problem is ongoing, it's something that is continuing, has been like that for a while. Especially if it defines our lives. 
if a sickness defines your life, it is the same. It just defines what you do. It, it does everything. It takes time and money consistently. Uh, it just is an amazing thing. You can't tell me that it's of God for us to have to spend two hundred dollars a month on medication. Amen. If it's just going to suck out that, just then there's got to be something different. God has a different plan. Okay, if the sickness defines your activities. You can't go here. You can't go there. You must do this. You can't do that. Okay? Or if it determines how you talk. I have arthritis. I have cancer. I have Parkinson's. What you do is you take it. It becomes part of your identity. That's the issue. It becomes how others see us, and it becomes how we see ourselves possibly used to getting out of doing things. We even use the sickness and the disease for our benefit so we don't have to do some of the things we don't want to do. Or it may have been called on because we want to deal with something that, that scares us. Um, I've seen so many, so many women who in my office and my, my dealings with things who had to have their disease because it's the only way to keep their husband around. If they wanted their husband to take care of them, the only way they could do that was to continually have the disease. Do you want to be set free from the disease? Well, no, because that's how I'm keeping my husband around. See, they use it for their benefit. We've seen this done so many times. People who had a debility, a disability, debilitating whatever, and they used it to rule. Everybody had to take care of them. Everybody did stuff for them. They didn't have to do anything else. Everybody did it for them. I, we've known people who ruled their household from a wheelchair. Queen, a rolling throne. We've seen this. We've seen this happen. We, I can tell you names. Okay? <laughs> it's just like, really? Do we get benefit from our sickness? Many times. Attention, sympathy, or we don't have to go do something that we don't want to do because, well, I can't, I don't feel good. Wow. Can we use this stuff against what God has? Well, yeah. Kind of an amazing deal. But the problem in all of these, if all these things are ongoing, all this kind of thing, what has happened is the problem has become an identity. It has become how we see ourselves. Now, I've seen this many times. This isn't just like a little... Nothing out there. Okay? Not a, it's not, not uh, uncommon. It's very common. Identity. Here's the issue. Our identity is how we see ourselves. Now, a person will never act different than how they see themselves. If you see yourself as minor and insignificant, guess how you're going to act? Minor and insignificant. If you see yourself as a person who's sick and weak, how are you going to act? Sick and weak. What's problem with identity is if it's, if it's who you are and somebody comes up to lay hands on you, you'll resist and not allow the healing to touch you. And we've seen this. We have seen this. I've known people who were prayed for a hundred times. And what do they say? You know, everybody prayed for me. It didn't work. It didn't work. It didn't work. Why? Well, there's a myriad of reasons why it could not have worked. Your lack of faith, your lack of revelation, you're just... But one that is really powerful is if it's become your identity and it's something you use. Resistant to healing. It's a focus on yourself. Focus on self is really, really a bad, knee, bad deal. And it's re, it's, you, you are resigned to being this way forever. You're resigned to it. It's yours. You got it. Now, if it's yours and you got it and it's got you and somebody walks up and says, Hi, can, you pray? can I pray for you? What's the thing that comes to your mind? Well, go ahead, but can who we are be healed? Yes. Yes. And see, this is, this is the beautiful part. This is, this is where I come in. And I, just, I get so excited about this. I'm sure it can. It's actually a matter of covenant. What happened is you've entered into covenant with that thing to protect yourself. Okay? Now, it's all about you and what you've trusted. 
Big, big deal. We have yielded to its authority. Its authority. We've yielded to it. Okay? Very, very important. Uh, we do what it says to do. So therefore, we obey it. Who's in control? We are? No. See, after a while, when you first use a sickness for your benefit, that's cool. I mean, you use it for your benefit, man. It keeps people away. It's just all this sort of stuff. That's neat. Until all of a sudden it starts restricting you and the pain gets heavy or whatever. And then all of a sudden you start wanting to get rid of it and you can't because you entered into covenant with it. Now you got a problem. Everybody in the world's praying for you and there's no healing. Why not? Because they can't heal your covenant. They can't go against your will of your choosing it to have its authority. And you can, people come and pray for you, and even the, the power of God cannot go against what you have deemed as your source of authority. Pretty powerful. Pretty powerful. So let's talk about Colossians 3, 1 through 4. Now, for those of you who know the identity teaching... You know that I didn't go to Corinthians, and you know that I didn't go to Ephesians, and I didn't go to all these other passages. I went straight to Colossians. So sue me, okay? <laughs> you can try it. It doesn't matter. But I'm going straight here. Why? There is more to Scripture on this. There's a whole, a whole series on just this thing. There's more to it. There's more Scripture than just this one, okay? But this is the one that really labels it out well. So we're just going to go to this passage. It says, if then you were raised with Christ, seek the things above. Now, this if then is not that if and it might not be true. If, if it is, if it isn't. No, it's not that condition of conditional. It's not that stage. What this is, is the if then you've been raised with Christ and it is true. That's the, the sentence structure. So it would be better to be translated, since then you are raised with Christ. Okay, this is that kind of, I think it's the third degree conditional. Okay, I've looked up the first, second, third degree conditionals and how they worked and I got confused. So it's one of those. It's, it's either the first or the second or the third degree of a conditional because that's only three. <laughs> since you were raised with Christ, question. Have you been raised with Christ? Yes. Prove it. Okay. Huh? <laughs> okay. Yeah. When? Well, when you were united with Jesus in his death, his burial, and his resurrection, when he was raised, you were raised. Since you have been raised with Christ. Now, this is talking about if you have given your faith and your life over to him... And he, his Holy Spirit has entered you and you are saved. Okay? You are changed. Since you've been raised with Christ. Now, who, so therefore, who is he talking to? Believers. This is very, very important. Because he's talking to believers. And this whole passage is talking to believers. This is to the, the church at Colossae. This is to Christians. Hello. Very important. Since then you are raised with Christ, seek the things above. Push to understand the things above. Since you are raised with Christ, you are raised with him. Raised where? Ephesians 2 says that you've been seated with him in the heavenly realms. You've been raised from the dead to walk a new life. And where are you now? You have absolute, total access to heaven itself. Now, since you've been raised, what? Seek the things above. In other words, get your head out of all this normal stuff that's of the world here. Now, you can't leave the world completely. You're all going to get hungry sometime today, probably before the end of the message. <laughs> Okay? You're going to get hungry. So, what, can we condemn you now by saying, oh, see, you should think of the things above, not the things of the earth. No. you gotta, you got to understand. He's not saying that everything that's physical is now sin. What's he saying? He says, seek the things above. How does this all fit into the kingdom? How does this whole thing work? We're going to eat today. Cool. How's that work in the kingdom? Well, what is about your food that's important? 
Okay? It is important. It's going to keep you alive. It's, it's cool. It's good. But what about that food? Are you eating the proper stuff? I mean, is it stuff that has been sacrificed to idols? I mean, it talks about that kind of thing. It, don't, be careful with what foods you're going to be stuffing down your, your gullet. You know, there's, there's gonna, how about praying for it? Are you receiving it with thanksgiving? Are you knowing where it came from? Are you know how it's supplied? See, there's a whole bunch of stuff about the spirit realm about your lunch today. Okay? How exciting! Okay, take that food with, it, with thanksgiving. Now, what's in that food? If you know anything about processed food now in today's world and all the different stuff that Monsanto has done and all the genetic enhancements, quote unquote, and all this stuff, you don't even know what you're eating. Even the people who study it don't know what they're eating. They just kind of like, yeah, I gas, you know. Okay, how cool. Now, let's seek the things above not the things on earth. Let's see what I can take that food and I can understandably by my faith, thanking the Lord for what he's done for that food, change the molecular structure of that food and what is poisonous will not hurt me. You say, really? Yeah, it says you drink poison, it won't hurt you and all that good stuff. What are you doing with it? Well, you're taking the things of the earth and you're making it submit to the things of the heavenly realm. Who are you? You are a saint. You are a heavenly being that's on this planet. What is inside you is you are housing the Holy Spirit himself. Why are we stuck on this thing? We've got to understand, we are better than this. We're more than this. What was that happened to us? Who are you? What are you? What's happened? We've got to learn these things because that's why the Lord gave us the scripture. So we can find out what really happened. It's too cool. Seek the things above where Christ is sitting at the right of God. And where are you sitting? Right with him. Where? In him, where he sits, you sit. That's just too cool. Sitting at the right of God. Then it says, mind the things above, not the things on earth. Get the thought processes of the way they think in heaven. Okay? Not the way earthly guys think. Earthly people think in a different way. But they look at us and go, you are just weird. My response is, thank you. Amen. And may I be even weirder. Yeah. Okay. May weirdness be taken to an art form. <laughs> I have not yet begun to weird. You know. Wow. We're going to weird. I'll show you weird. Man, if they think just coming to church is weird, what's going to happen when you reach out and grab them and their foot straightens out? And you reach out and touch somebody and their eyes are opened. Hello. That's weird. It's also not as weird because it benefited them. But it's pretty weird. There's just something about standing there watching somebody's body have a problem and all of a sudden it doesn't. Cool. How weird is that? Extremely. And I'm in. Mind the things above, not the things on the earth. We've got to have our thought process of the way they think there, not the way they think here. Can we change food? Sure. Why not? Why do we pray for it? God is great. God is good. And we thank him for this food. Amen. But then it says this. For you died and your life has been hidden with Christ in God. Now listen, you are not of this world. You died to this world. You are now raised with Christ. You have a whole new life in you. You have the resurrection power living within you. You're not normal. Amen. Not to this world. But you are becoming normal to that realm. Yes. What is normal to them? You died. Your life has now been hidden with Christ in God. Okay, I should have brought up my little jar, my little jar with the glasses in it. Okay, the idea, I have two glasses. One's a, you know what they are. They're down there on the thing. Would you go grab them? I'll just do that real quick. Both the glass and the jug with the glass in it. Okay, you died. Your life has now been hidden with Christ in God. Now, the issue that I want you to see here is with Christ. With Christ. How close are you to him? Now, we're talking about a person, the person of Jesus Christ, a person. Do you know him? This sits down on my bookshelf down there forever. I have had several people walk up and go, why do you have a glass and a jar of water? 
I've never had anybody say, why do you have two glasses and one of them is in a jar of water? This is invisible. They don't care about this one. This one makes dead matter at all. Why? Because it's just normal. It's just a glass. What's it for? You fill it with liquid and you drink from it. That's what it's for. This one is weird. It's not for you anymore. It's set aside for God's use only. Sanctified. Set aside for Him. This is it. It's whole purpose has changed. It's no longer a glass for people to drink out of. It's an illustration for Jesus now. Now it's the whole purpose has changed. Its life is now different. It died to its former life and it's now hidden in the water in the jug. Its life is different now. This is who you are. You see, what is really cool is it's almost hard to see that glass in there. Okay, why? Because it disappears because it's not about us. It's about him. So we disappear to us. Isn't that just a cool, too cool of an illustration? Every time I've taken this people, people, okay, and I've had several people just go out and buy jugs and glasses and fill it with water and have this sitting in their home. Okay? People who do this ministry, who do our ministry, they do this. This is a good illustration. By the way, it's also a perfect illustration of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's a whole other issue. Okay. Okay? Your life is now hidden with Christ in God. It's in Christ. Whenever Christ our life is revealed, then also you'll be revealed with Him in glory. Whenever Christ our life is revealed. Now, whenever Christ comes and manifests through us here on this planet, who's He come through? He comes the real us. He can't come through the false us, the self us, the, <coughs> the sinful parts, the parts that are not of God. The only parts He can come through are the parts that are of Him. Isn't that too cool? I love this passage. This thing is so cool. All of this makes it sound like this is right now. You're raised with Christ. You're seating with Him. You're minding the things now. You died and your life is now hidden with Christ and God. Whenever Christ our life is revealed, why does this make it sound like, oh, when He comes in the splitting of the eastern sky, you know, and then when Christ is revealed, we'd be like Him. No, no, no. When Christ is being revealed now, here, now, we are becoming like Him. Seeking the spiritual realm over the physical. That's what this whole thing is about, is finding out there's more to life than this thing. Boy, praise God, there's more to life than right there. So the issue is in Christ. The issue is, and I've got, I'm going to hit this really solid. What I'm going to be showing you is not a technique. It can be taken to a technique. People can use it as a technique, and if they do, They'll miss the greatest glory, the greatest beauty of it, but it'll still work. That's what's really funny. This is scripture based on relationship. If we can't do this with Christ, we're not doing this at all. This has got to be done in Him. This is about His presence being in the room. Everything, now I, this is not new, folks. I have been preaching this for how long? Everything is about His presence. Everything is about relationship. It's all about Him and you and Him and you and Him and you. You knowing Him personally, talking to Him personally, hearing from Him personally, walking with Him personally. That's what this is all about. We get everything we get, we get in His presence. We don't get anything without getting in His presence. You understand? He is the source of it all. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. So what we need to do is get rid of any hindrances between Him and me. Nothing between my soul and the Savior. That's the goal. I haven't obtained that yet. I keep finding that stupid soul keeps showing up again. And I said that because Caleb and Abby were not in here. See, I got away with it, more or less. I'm waiting for Jared to say, Yeah, I shouldn't say stupid. Okay. But my soul keeps cropping up in some dumbest places and things that I didn't know I didn't deal with. And it just shows up. Ugh. I hate it. I hate it. And I, I, I wish I could say, well, I have gained such a spirituality that when it shows up, I just respond correctly to the whole thing and just is so smooth. Everything's so neat. That's the superhero I see that I'm supposed to be coming into, but I'm not quite there yet. I still respond in flesh a lot. Does anybody else here do that? Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Not at all. Everybody here but Kimberly? Okay. Yeah. 
Lord, we want to bring her up before you right now that the eyes of her understanding may be enlightened. Okay, we need to get rid of the hindrances that are keeping that process from happening. He will walk you through this whole process. This is the issue, is that Jesus himself is going to walk you through this process. He wants you free. This is all about him in our lives. It's all about him. It's all about him. Always has been. This process is to show us who we really are. That's what the outcome of this thing is to be. Now, this is where I got the whole idea about naming our ministry Face-to-Face -face Healing Ministries, is that we are going to meet face-to-face -face with people, and we're going to take them face-to-face -to, -face to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is going to take them face-to-face -to, -face to who they really are. And that's our whole ministry. That's what the whole thing is based on. It's all about Him showing you who you are. So we're back in Colossians chapter 3. We're going to start in verse 5 through 7. It says, Then put to death your members, which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil lust, and covetousness, which is idolatry, on account of which things the wrath of God is coming on the sons of disobedience, among whom you also walked at one time when you were living in these. This is heavy. All of a sudden, he says, man, you are raised with Christ. You're, you're all this stuff Jesus Christ is trying to manifest through you onto this planet. The real you is in there. He says, now what are the hindrances? The hindrances are your old mannish ways of doing things. If you have submitted to fornication as a covenant, then you've got to kill it because it is killing you. We have got to put to death the things that are killing us. We've got to find out what things are hindering us. So he gives us a list. And he starts right off with fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil lust, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Now, when I bring that out to a bunch of Christians, every one of you say, well, praise God, that's not me. I have no fornication. I have no uncleanness. I have no evil lust. I have no covetousness. And therefore, I am not guilty of idolatry. You want to know something? I do get that attitude when I give this verses. People go, oh no, man, I've been a Christian forever. I'm, I don't do this stuff. I'm not, I'm good boy. But here's the issue. These things are deep and they're heavy, but they are every one of them a covenant that we enter into to gain something. For ourselves, for our selfishness. What is fornication? All forms of sex outside of covenant, outside of the way God determined it to be, all of that is called fornication. There are a hundred different subcategories. Adultery is a subcategory of fornication. Masturbation, pornography, lust, all that stuff is just subcategories of the one heading called fornication. Uncleanness. People say, well, isn't that the same thing, uncleanness and fornication? No, you can be unclean without having sex. Uncleanness. All forms of fornication are uncleanness, but not all forms of uncleanness are fornication. Passion. This is not talking about the good kind of passion. This is the evil kind of passion. That just driving obsession about something. Okay, that passion. Evil lust. Lust is this huge category. Sexual lust is just a subcategory of this huge, we've talked about lust forever. Lust is whenever you want something for you, and that's all there is to it. You want it. It's all about you and your selfishness. It's all about you. Okay, that's lust. And covetousness. By the way, there is a non-evil lust. It's a good lust. Did you know there's a good lust? The Bible says, he who lusts after the office of overseership lusts a good thing. We can want something with great intensity, and it can be godly. Problem is, most of the time, it isn't. Okay. <laughs> you gotta say that again for the microphone. You gotta say this again. This is really good. So what you're saying is, I should lust after love. Absolutely. You should want the love with all that is within you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll talk to you about Thursday. See how that's working out for you, okay? It's just like... <laughs> okay, yes, you should want it with all you have within you. But the big deal is it's idolatry. All of these are idolatry, which is what? Worshiping something that's not God, which is what? All of this is about you worshiping what you want, getting it for yourself. And as long as you're doing that, that's idolatry, okay? But now that we've got that kind of out of the road, you've got to see this then put to death your members. In the sentence structure, who does the putting to death? You. 
Isn't that wild? You're the one that does the putting to death. Why? That's right. You gave it life. You gave it life. You entered into covenant with it. Now you have to break that covenant. And I keep hearing people saying, oh, God, take away the porn. Take away the fornication. Take it away. How many people have said, oh, God, take away the alcohol. Take away the drugs. Take away the, take, take away. And God, I'm going to tell you right now his answer. His answer is no. Why? It's not up to him to take it away. It's up to you to break the covenant with it. And until you do, you're passing it off and saying, well, if God doesn't take it away, then I'm just, um, I, I have it. It's not my fault. Sorry. It is your fault because you entered into covenant with it. Okay. Now, we've got to understand. God wants us to do something with it. And he tells us in the scripture, you take it off. When sin becomes our identity, this is what this is all about. Sin has become our identity. It's become a part of us. It's become a member of our body or a member of our being, just like a finger is a member of our body. It's a member. It becomes an identity. It becomes part of us like a body part. Now, here's where we're going to change things just a little bit. What happens when sickness becomes a part of us? See, when we use the sickness for our benefit, what is it? It's, we're entering a covenant with it. It's the same thing. It's idolatry. It's all about you. That's why it can be part of this. Identity. We made it a part of our lives. Now, I've got this neatest story to tell you what happened to us. I've got this story. I'm just begging to tell this story. Oh, I'm waiting, but it's, it's coming. This is going to be so cool. We gained something from our sickness we make that sickness part of our lives. We use it for our selfish advantage. We talked about that before. It has more control than we actually want it to have. Therein lies the problem. Now, this has come to me four times now, so I'm going to just say it. Okay, get the car running. Here we go. Fat. The majority of women get fat to protect themselves. Then they fight all their lives to lose the weight that they have entered into covenant to protect themselves with. If a woman has been molested or even solicited too heavily or even too much pressure put on her sexually or for favors, for whatever, she will gain weight to protect herself because she's not as attractive. Now she gains the weight to protect herself. She's entered into covenant with the fat. And then she goes to the fat later and says, go away. And it says, no, we have a covenant. And so they go spend all this time, energy, and money on all these diets that will not work. Because it's an identity deal. Oh, yeah. Men, too. Men can be the same thing. Men can be. Okay, but I'm just saying that I find this with women an awful lot. Okay, men, there's other issues usually, but with this one, it's just a common, very, very common thing. Can be with men too. Okay, um, men can use it to protect themselves, not necessarily from sexual advances, but from other things. Because I've seen kids get fat just so that they wouldn't have to play the sports because the sports hurt them or they were ridiculed by it or something, and so they they put on the fat so they wouldn't have to. Okay, but listen, I've seen the same thing with asthma. People taking on asthma so they wouldn't have to participate in things they didn't want to put, participate in. We had one lady in my office that found out that she had done that, protect herself, because she had been molested and we had dealt with the molestation. She dropped 80 pounds. It's too cool. I like it. It may have started from an outside influence, but we called it on to gain something. We called it on ourselves. We give it authority. We may want to get rid of it, and now we can't. Because it's more than just a decision. It's, it's, an, it's a covenant. Now it's deep. Now it has a grip. Now, we just went to that. Now, you put to death your members which are on this earth. Okay? Put to death means it has life that you have to take away from it. Okay? Then it says in the next two verses, 8 and 9, it says, but now you also, and who's it talking about? You. You also put off all these things. Now, the other one might, oh, well, I'm not, in, I'm not in fornication or uncleanness and all this or stuff. As soon as I bring up this list, I have not seen anybody that can just sit there and say, oh, it's not me. 
Because we're going to this list, now we're getting, we're going from preaching to meddling real quick right here. But now you also put off all these things, wrath, anger. What's the difference between wrath and anger? This is a very fascinating little difference. Wrath, when you find it in Scripture, is when God's wrath comes on the planet because he has a judgment against it. So what is wrath? Wrath is an anger that has a judgment behind it. So if you judge somebody with the anger, then what do you have? Wrath. Okay, put off all these things, wrath, anger, malice, just doing something because it's mean. No, no we wouldn't do that unless we were married. Uh, we tend to do that. Okay, you know, really understand, but we do that. We do, sometimes we just do something just because, then I'll show them. <laughs> that's malice. Evil speaking, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Shameful speech out of our mouth. And then it says, do not lie to one another, lying. How many people have used lying as their protector? They can't ever tell the truth because they, it's how they found protect themselves with is by lying. Wow, it becomes a covenant and you have a stronghold. Man, it's hard to break. Do not lie to one another, having put off the old man's practices. This is the old, the putting off. This is very, very important. Now, both those put offs and the one in the put to death, all of those, we're in the aorist imperative middle, which means aorist means it's no time frame. It's whenever you're doing it, you, it's done. You, it's always current. It's always around. Command is the imperative. It's a command form. It means it's commanded to do this. So in other words, as long as there's the command, you're supposed to be doing it. That's the command and the aorist imperative. That's what that's about. Middle voice. I've taught you about middle voice. Middle voice is fascinating, and it, we don't have it in English. It's only in the Greek, or it's in other ones, but it's in the Greek. We have two voices in English, passive and active. Active means we do something, okay? I slap Jeff. <laughs> okay? It was active. It was something I did. I did it. It was an action. It was going out. Passive means I receive it. Jeff slaps me. And boy, the look on his face was like, really? All right. Down boy, it was illustration. All right. <laughs> no, five times is not. <laughs> okay. Passive, it was done to me by somebody else. I didn't do anything. It was being done to me. Middle voice in the Greek is just that. It's in between active and passive. It's both. It's both active and passive. I'm both doing it and receiving it. It's something I do to myself. I slap me. That's middle voice. This is fascinating. All these put off these things is things that you actively do to yourself and receive. You've got to take it off. God did, God said, no, I'm not taking it off because I already told you in scripture that you have to because you entered into covenant with it. Now you take it off. How many of our diseases are covenantial? Put off, take off the old image. Now let's just go right through it, how that, that's done. We need to see it the way it really is. Now, here's what I do when I'm dealing with people and it doesn't matter where it is, when we start finding this identity, I ask people the question, well, if it were a garment, what would it look like on you? If it was a substance, a physical substance, and you could see yourself and see it on you, what would that look like? Now, I do this with the pornography all the time. And so I tell people, I ask them, what's the fornication look like on you? And to a man, every single time so far, it's something black, slimy, nasty, and covers them. How's the porn look like on you? Oh, it's just this stuff that's just like, ugh, and they just, and I let them describe it. And I say, does it have a smell? And you see them go, ugh. Does it have a feel to it? It's slimy. And they, they go, this is a really intense description of it. Why? Because they know it's real. This is God doing it. Now, what about your sickness? What does the sickness look like on you? Okay, I'm just going to bring out just one for the grins. Migraine headaches, 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 they infuriate me. I have never had one. I've had a bad headache, but I know that's the people who have had these things tell you, you don't know. 
anything about a headache until you've had a migraine. Debilitating. Hammer your eyes. Light, any light is painful. Sound is painful. What'd you say? Death seems the better option. <laughs> <laughs> That's just like... Tell that cat to quit stomping across the floor kind of pain. It's just, I've, and, and it debilitates. Miranda has had them. And just like, and man, as a parent, to sit there and watch your child go through this is just horrible. Jared has had headaches. God, I hate him. Let's say a person didn't want to go somewhere, didn't want to do something, was really fearful over it, and decided to have a headache instead. So they had an excuse not to go. And they called on a headache. And they started getting worse and worse. So pretty soon, you have this thing that has now taken over your life. And it's called a migraine. I've seen this. People get set free from migraines by what we're doing. This is why I can use this as a good illustration. I hate them. I've never had them, but I hate them. So I have asked people, what does the migraine look like? If you looked at yourself in the spirit realm and you saw yourself and had a migraine, what would the migraine look like? And man, the descriptions I've heard is like it's metal bands wrapped around my head with spikes going in them. That's what I've people have seen where it's just this, this stuff that's just, it's just in their head. And I went, oh, folks, this is, this is worse than a horror movie. This is, this is stuff. How do you, this is inside. This is the debilitating pain. And one person said, I see nails driven into my eyes. Okay. Another one had a pincher like is almost like a, a lab lobster claw only is made out of metal and is clamped around the back of their neck now if the Lord is giving people these kinds of pictures of what it's like to have a migraine what's going on but you have to see it you have to know what it is you're fighting okay see what it really is the realm of sin versus grace now you got to understand I'm not there to try to make them feel guilty. That's not the issue. The issue is to deal with this thing. So we ask the question, Lord, would you show them when they entered into covenant with this thing? When? And you take them right back to a memory, boom, then and they see it happen. Each time they've seen what was going on with it. What do we do? We let the Lord show you when and why, what was going on with it. First thing you do is say, Lord, I entered into covenant with this and it was wrong. Would you please forgive me? And hear the answer. <laughs> hear the answer. <clears throat> then you've got to forgive yourself for letting it have authority. You see, you've got to forgive yourself, right? Because the judgments do what? Keep the sin there. So you've got to ask forgiveness and forgive yourself. For letting it have authority. Then you come back to the picture, come back to the present. And this is what I always say. We're going back to the past. We do time travel. We go in the past and we find out what it was. We break that lie, break that stuff. Then we come back to the present and you look at it and you see the, the bands of metal on your head, whatever. Look on that screen. What does it say? Why? Because God has given us the power of the blessing to break the power of the curse. So we have to apply it on purpose and we speak to it. Okay, there's a connection between the heart and the mouth, right? We speak to it and we say, I gave you authority. I entered into false covenant with you. However, Jesus has forgiven me and I have forgiven me. That is powerful. Mm -hmm. Jesus has forgiven me. I've forgiven me. So therefore... I now break your covenant. You no longer have hold in my life. My covenant with Jesus is stronger. Now, come on. Can you see the power of this thing? You've given it covenantial power. And now you're taking the covenant that Jesus has with you. And you're breaking all previous covenants as to how you can do that. Because his covenant is stronger. Remember communion today? This covenant surpasses them all. You have no more. You're telling this thing. 
migraines, you have no more authority in my life. Boom. I break your power to be here. You must leave. <laughs> this is getting too good, right? Migraines. Why should they have part of our life? I don't care what it is. Any disease can be broken. Anyone. It's identity. Then I tell them, okay, start taking it off. Now, see, they have authority now. They put it on. They couldn't take it off before because they gave it authority. But now they have authority back. Now they can take it off. And I tell them, take it off and throw it down at your feet. Why? I want them to see it here before you. I want them to see it in the dirt in front of you. It's got to be here. It's got to be here. Take it off and throw it down. Now, almost always, and I got to say almost always, I can't remember a time when it wasn't, but almost always, there's tendrils from whatever it is that reaches into our minds and captures how we think or reaches into our heart and captures our emotions. Almost always there's tendrils. They got to break those tendrils off. They're throwing this thing down. They're breaking things off. They're pulling things out. I've seen people just, just take things and go, ow, 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 as they're pulling it out. It comes out like it, it hurts. Are any of you relating to any part of this? Are you following this? This thing is, it has deep, deep roots, and it will try to be sneaky. It's going to try to stay there. You say, this sounds like a demon. I'll just let that ride. I make sure they get it all off, and they get it all off. When it comes to the porn and stuff, I have them scrape it off of themselves, and they have to scrape it off their back and out of their armpits and scrape it out of their eye sockets. And I mean, this thing is, especially if they've been doing the porn, they're seeing it, so that it's just jammed in their eye sockets, and they have to get it all out. It's, it's just, it's permeating. It's everywhere, okay? See, yeah, but this is the whole thing. Until you understand how this stuff functions, how are you ever going to go here? See? And so all you're going to do is you're going to have one golf club in your bag. I'm going to lay hands on you, and that's it. Oh, we've got a whole golf bag full of stuff. Okay? Identity is a driver. It's a big one. And we've got to understand how this works. Get it all off. Now I have them see themselves without it. What's it look like without it? Wow, that's cool. Now, that first passage says, put to death your members which are on this earth. Put it to death. This is fascinating. I asked the Lord, Lord, what weapon do you have to give them to kill that thing with? It's sitting at their feet. Almost everybody that takes it off, it's still sitting there, but it's moving. The bands of metal that have the spikes into their head is moving. The slime they took off is writhing. It's trying to get back home. It's alive, and it's a member of their body. And the Bible says, put it to death. Put it to death. So I said, Lord, do you have a weapon for them to kill it with? And that's when fun starts. Now, from here on out, it's been just kind of traumatic, but now it starts getting fun. Because some of the neatest stuff that God has given people to kill these things with is so slick. Swords, lots of swords. I don't know. I think there's an anointing there. But swords, lots of swords, daggers, guns. I still think the funnest one is I saw a guy in a pure man conference sitting there going, God gave him a flamethrower. <laughs> That's our flamethrower people. That's it. Okay, what weapon do you have to kill it with? Put it to death. Kill it. And tell it, I remove your life from you. Speak to it. You can no longer have life. I kill you dead. And then what do we do? Dig a hole. Bury it. Bury it deep and fill in the dirt. The whole idea is to get that thing. You killed it, bury it, put it in there, and put up a grave marker. Why do I do that? I want them to have a memorial in their mind that they can go back to at any time and say, look, fornication died. Look, the migraine died. That's where it's buried. And I am point to it, to that grave marker, and say, Migraine, you are dead, you are buried, and it is finished. 
The same thing I say with the other. Fornication, you are dead, you are buried, and it is finished. And there's something about that word saying it is finished. You can feel the ripples in the spirit realm when they say it. You can feel the thing just happen. Something happens in the spirit when they say it's finished. My God, I love that. I am so addicted to heaven. Here people say it is finished. It is so cool. Okay, down boy. It is no longer on you as an identity. Walk away from it. And then I ask that one question that, that Jeremiah keeps hearing me here in his brain is, uh, how's that feel? What's that feel like? How does that feel? I love asking people that and they go, wow, it's gone. I have one lady that wants so bad for me to put a doctor scale in my office and weigh everybody before session and then weigh them afterward. I'm resisting that. Absolutely. That's not going to happen. However, she says, because I know I just lost 50 pounds. The weight of all of this is gone. Isn't that cool? Even if that was all we did, that would be awesome. But the Lord has so much more. Colossians 3.10 says, And having, and after that, having put on the new, having been renewed in full knowledge according to the image of the one creating him. you got to put something on. This is partnering with God. He has a vision of what you look like, how you're supposed to be. What does he have instead of what you just took off? Well, Lord, what do you have for her instead of the migraines? What do you have? This is too fun. The old must be replaced according to the image that he has, according to revelation knowledge, by who he says you are. See, this is all about Jesus, isn't it? Now Jesus has tried to show them who they really are. And, Lord, what do you have for me to wear? What do you have for me to put on that replaces what I just took off? He's not into just leaving you hanging naked. He wants you to be clothed with things. He says, put this on. Well, Lord, what do you have for them to put on instead of the migraine? They just took this thing, this helmet of spikes going inside. They just took it off and killed it. Lord, what do you have for them? Almost exclusively when they take it off, there's a crown of some sort. New authority. And this one lady says, wow, it's not metal. I mean, it has metal, but it's padded. All the spikes that went down into her head were gone. And now this padded crown, just really nice. Lots of jewels, and, but it's padded. God was taking care of her head so smoothly. Oh, come on. Take what he gives you and receive it. This is what I put on. In pornography, almost, almost most of the time, it's silver armor. Why? Silver is a type of cleansing. It's what's in the scriptures, always cleansing. It's purity. It's armor of purity. And he gives them armor of purity to put on. That's too cool. But this, what? He has something for him that replaces the migraines. This is the real you, the way Jesus sees you. Where's the disease? I always ask him. Ask Jesus, well, well where's the disease then? Well, it's buried. It's dead. It's gone. It has no hold on me. I like it. And sometimes here I have them ask him the real question. The real question right now. Lord, am I healed? You see, I can't tell somebody they're healed. But Jesus can. Am I healed? Whew, it's too fun. Romans 13. Nope, not going to do it. I'm going to stop right there because we've gone way too long. I've got too much stuff left to go. We're going to do part two next week on identity. And what we're probably going to do is just even do some. We'll all do it together. I didn't want to just take all this time, but I want to take our time and do it right and do it smooth, okay? And so next week as we get together, yeah, uh, we're going to do identity again. We're going to go over this real briefly and then go over to the next steps and what goes on with it. And then we're going to, as a crowd, as corporately, do it together. Take off different things. We're going to just do it next week, okay? So be praying this week, Lord, what, what, what do you want me next week to deal with? What, what, what thing? Because here's the deal. I want us to be the most healed people on the planet, okay? So that we can go out there and bring what we have to them. I'm still, no, that's going to happen. People are going to be healed in the post office. 
seen it. I want to see that. I want to see it personally, but I know that people are going to be involved down there. I've already seen it in the spirit realm, but people are going to be healed in the post office. You're just down there and you go in to get your mail, and there's a guy standing there and just, he's just, oh, what's wrong with you? My back is killing me. Here we he. You want to get rid of that? Poof, and he has no more back. No, no more pain, okay? <laughs> I'm just, what happened? I don't know. He's just a ball of jelly. There's no back left. If he hits the floor, that's God will heal his back, okay? <laughs> okay. Did you get something out of that today? Yes. Where are we going with this? We're going into the spirit realm. We're going to have it all. Amen? Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for what you're doing. And Lord, we are just, right now, we are so, so close to watching you deal with the deepest things that we've ever had to deal with and just watch it all walk away. And Lord, it isn't just healing of diseases, but next week, Lord, we're going to see addictions leave. And Lord, we're going to see old things just gone because, well, your presence is going to be here and your word is being used. Lord, we just give you praise for all of this. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Are you blessed? Amen. Go with God.